Normal isn't what it used to be. This is a story about change. Nestled in a shallow valley is the town of Beacon Pines. Far from the town square, across the river, past the neglected welcome sign, a young boy walks alone at dawn. Oh. His name is Luca Van Horn, and like you, dear reader, he's here for a reason. We're playing with the controller tonight. I like that art style. It's really cute. And then he's got the antlers. Ah, oh, that's nice. Oof. Well, this started off dark. Hey guys, how are you doing? So this is a new game, Beacon Pines. We're playing something cute today. It's a indie mystery. Luca's closest friend. He possessed many fine qualities, but subtlety was not one of them. <laughs> it's so nice. I like how his personality is designed into him. Like he's got dirty overalls. He seems to have messy hair, but he's still cute art style. Rolo finally noticed the tears swelling in his friend's eyes and the flowers on the grave. Ooh. Ooh. Now we know what's happening. His mom's missing. Of course she is. Of course she's gonna come back, buddy. You're a horrible friend. <laughs> right, and then we'll be off on our adventure. Oh, ooh, dandelions. Oh, what? <laughs> what was that? Wonderful. I had a good feeling about you from the moment you opened my book. That charm is a very special thing. Very special indeed. Keep hold of it for now. Okay. Its purpose will reveal itself soon enough. Okay, we, we got what we needed from there, I think. <laughs> he was here and he didn't even know why. That's the perfect way to start the side suspiciously. Uh huh. Telegram before heading out with Rolo. All right. What's this? We can jump. All right. Any other special skills? None. All right. Cool. Going Dear in the house. Dear reader, forgive me for this interlude. 
Remember that charm you found in the dandelion patch? There are more of those special charms to discover throughout Beacon. It High. is. Thanks, Ironic. I, 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 I don't know. Probably. As cute as it is, there's probably going to be murder. It's going to be people dead. Um, we started this game with, apparently, the dad died like six years ago and his mom is missing. So, maybe murder? They've been known to reveal themselves to those who are willing. Some of them can be found in this very house. Gran had already lit the fire. She kept a warm house, as if by grandmotherly obligation. Oh. Fireplaces are nice. Hey, the comfy chair. Gonna fall asleep right there. New charm. <laughs> I like how he just slides off the chair. One of his father's old stethoscopes. Luca had spent countless hours listening to anything and everything with it. Not for years, though. I remember when I had um, science lab. I don't know why we had that for biology, but I had a stethos. I was playing around with the stethoscope. I don't know how I got it or if it was actually mine or I borrowed it. Since Gran had moved in, the house was more I was peaceful, listening to everything. more orderly, and more covered in flowery fabric. Hmm. Just some dusty knickknacks. Explore the house. The house we live in. It's um, right now. He's in the house with him and just his grand because his dad passed six years ago and his mom's been missing for a while. Meals crowded the refrigerator, each labeled with the day of the week. What a grandmother a pair of dull thing scissors, to do. A broken can opener, a mostly empty bottle of glue, and some loose string. You never know when this, these items might come in handy. Oh, again, can we turn the faucet off? Cool. The only piece of furniture Gran had brought when she moved in was an old hutch. Oh. It's probably this thing. The only piece of furniture that she brought in with her. Is she in the back? Oh my, this is quite exciting. I am now certain that you are the one I've been waiting for all these years. I see the exciting. You'll recall I was a bit coy regarding the use of charms earlier. Excuse me, I tend to have a flair for the dramatic. You are about to encounter your first turning point. There are certain times in this tale when everything hinges on a single word. Step forth, dear reader. Young Luca would spend hours hiding in the bushes, waiting for a chance to jump out and startle his mother. She always enjoyed humoring him by feigning terror. Such a cute thing to do. This. On the other hand, I suppose there's no reason to rush things. Gran will be waiting when you return. <laughs> I'm not ready for that turning point yet. We have the upstairs to unlock. Luca paused at his parents' bedroom door. He just wasn't ready to go in yet. Oof. Gran had commandeered the upstairs closet when she moved in. Some things need shelter from a young boy's mischief, she said. We're getting those. We're gonna need those later, I feel. Come on, what's in this bed? Luca Put tossed on his favorite old sweater. Even though it was the first day of summer, a chill still hung in the air. Chill. Grand's moving in meant that most of Luca's things had been crammed in the corner. Luca was somewhat annoyed by the situation. Grand's bed was undisturbed. Luca didn't mind that she had a habit of falling asleep in front of the fireplace. It meant that he could read late into the night. We can't go into that room. That's a parent's room. Nothing there. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think we're ready to meet the grandmother. 
Do, do, do. The fridge is open. That's it's triggering me why the fridge is open. Ooh, A sturdy old wheelbarrow. Okay, I thought there was more something more to it. A beginner's guide to gardening laid open on the bench. I think the Gran has um, a mysterious air about her. She's got the gypsy look going on. The less Gran knew, the better for everyone involved. Gonna go hard for the day? Chill. Just gonna go chill for the day. <laughs> oh, that's cute. The best lies are built on truth. <laughs> Always in a hurry to do nothing. Easy. Impressive. You've managed to navigate your first turning point without too much of a mess. Yes. That is the power of charms. A single word can change everything. Oh, all right. I think I see it's where time to introduce this you works. to the Chronicle. The Chronicle is a record of the decisions you've made. You can see the turning point which has been revealed. At any time, you can use the Chronicle to go back and invoke different charms, creating new branches. Oh. Interesting. So it's kind of like time travel, I think. Luckily for us, this is the one and only turning point where the charms won't dramatically alter fate. It's the perfect opportunity to experiment with rewriting things. Uh, what? Hide for the day? We were just gonna go hide for the day. Traditionally, when one is trying to hide something, they avoid literally using the word hide. <laughs> All's well that ends well. Cool. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, we can take time travel, yeah. Ponder, let's, let's see we how, how that works. We're just gonna go ponder for the day. <laughs> this was Lucas' chance to sell his alibi. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Medium pondering. <laughs> All right, that works. I think we can move on. Stay out of trouble. Oh, and make it double. <laughs> All right, we'll see. We'll try. Get in trouble for troll hope. That's get into trouble is an objective. A quest objective is wild. All right. Ooh, ooh. For a town that saw few visitors, the welcome was perhaps more grand than necessary. Yeah, probably. Oh, what's this? The road leading to Beacon Pines was long and uninspiring. A sort of natural barrier for the impatient. Okay, so we're not going to... Oh, that's right there. There's a sign right next to your secret bathroom. Though. My prayer. Chapter two. Bacon pines. That would be great if we could have like bacon growing on trees. Or is it like a pine tree made of bacon? I suppose it's still bacon growing on trees. Still delicious. Though. Welcome to Beacon Pines. 
You're making me hungry, ironic. For many years, this valley had been a small mining outpost. It wasn't until Sharper Valentine built his fertilizer company that Beacon Pines was established. Over the next 30 years, the town had grown and prospered. Until the foul harvest and his sudden death. In the six years since, everyone was simply trying to get by. Alright, there's a mystery there of what happened and how things happened. Hey buddy, do you need help with that ladder? Is it hyena? Is that a hyena? William Kerr was the CEO of Perennial Harvest Company. His, he looks suspicious. Like his smile is... I don't know, there's something behind that smile. He's up to something. He had become a fixture around town over the past few years. After the failing of Valentine Fertilizer, the town was hungry to welcome a new source of employment. More exciting than the town festival. St stab him. Stab him now. Before he does anything suspicious. It's preemptive defense, right? He called in the hole. Uh, huh. We have friends. There's like children there. <laughs> the dog looks so tired. Mayor Augustus Valentine was not busy. <laughs> Flustered, Gus instinctively loosened his tie. What concerned citizen? Is it me? <laughs> I like how he's taking... Is that blood on the floor? There's a little speck of red on the floor. I can't tell. This is realistic Animal Crossing. <laughs> Wait. Mission control. Authorized person. Wow, way to hide a secret pathway, buddy. Can't remember the last time I read one in. Never about a catch. Ah. Nice, nice. Dangerously free levels. <laughs> hey, man. They're adorable, is what they are. Empty chair makes for a great listener. Nice. Whenever Luca saw his dad's chair by the pond, it reminded him of the days they'd pack up a couple of sandwiches and fish until sundown. Luca opened the tackle box and picked the perfect bait. I was looking for sandwiches because the, the guy mentioned sandwiches and now I'm a little hungry. Luca tied a shoestring to the hook. What fish could resist a nice shoestring? <laughs> Give it a good cast. That's his dad. Oh, right. Or you catch one. Ooh. Alright, okay. Let's try it again. Luca tied a shoestring. What fish could resist a knife? Shoestring. Put it in, put it in, put it in. Put it in. Yes, it's a shoe. I got a shoe. <laughs> I got a shoe. Oh, 
Mother Boot at least has a sock to keep it company. Alright, let's let's try again. Luca tied a shoe. What fish could resist a nice It's kinda of funny that we got a shoestring and then we threw uh th used it as bait and we got a shoe in the line's going red, we gotta let go. Okay. You don't Hey, it's another shoe, I think. Alright, okay, yeah. Oh, alright, let's try a different bait then. Uh, Luca gently baited a feather onto the hook. A feather? Good for skimming the surface. Let's try it out. What are we gonna get? I, I wonder. We are an expert fisherman for a child. Hey, it's a duckling. It's your old rubber ducky. That's interesting. Oh. Interesting. Like okay, I so said, this is the secret hut. Get in trouble with Rolo. Right, secret hut. The boys Something had here. a good thing going. As long as they kept old Jeff happy, they had an endless source of precious materials to add to the treehouse. Who is old Jeff? Oh, this is actually a pretty After good treehouse. After father had passed, Rolo became obsessed with them building their own Hank Atomic Star Scraper. It was some time before Luca realized it was Rolo's way of keeping him occupied. On certain nights, when the clouds were just right, the boys could tune into strange patterns of static. Rolo thinks it's aliens. He always thinks it's aliens. It's always aliens. Luca's winter coat decommissioned for the summer. With the cold holding out longer than usual, he reconsidered its usefulness. Right, we have a winter coat in the group clubhouse, got it? Oh, oh something was glowing. Keep <laughs> rolling. So is that a cat? Is that it's Rolo's a tabby cat, right? And I'm a deer, a baby, a baby deer, a fawn. They're fawns, right? Oh no, orange cats are d Why are orange cats dumb? Ironics GF. Sort of accidentally burned down the chicken coop. up at the satellite dish. Rollo nearly killed himself putting that up into the tree. While it didn't turn the radio into an interstellar communicator, as he'd hoped, it did at least boost the signal enough to overhear truckers one town over. Okay, wait, go back. Hey, we at least we got a charm out of that. Uh, 
Nothing else here, nothing else there. Got it. What's here? Cool. I thought there would be something there, but apparently I'm wrong. Right, we talked to these guys. Now let's talk to everybody else in town. Mr. Piggy Sinclair is sleeping. continued snoring and lifted one eyelid just enough to see who it was, a tactic he often used to avoid undesirable conversation. I think we can boost the audio music volume up a bit. Yeah, that's good. Why are they bullying this one rabbit? The hippo and is that what animal is that? It's a rhino. Oh, she's a rhino, not a hippo. My mistake. Why are they asking to grab that man's wallet? He pulled a pen from the pocket of his sweater vest and began to frantically jot something down on a clipboard. Ah, hey, Pete. Documenting what? I wonder how they plan to change the world. But alright. Alright. Hey Seraphic, how are you doing? You missed the start, it was uh, very, very dark. Something you love about Beacon Pines. Pete stopped scribbling and glanced up from the clipboard. How was your night, Seraphic? <laughs> so this is our friend Rolo. He's a tabby cat. Coffee house? Luca could see the morning regulars nestled in their booths at the early bean. The beacon beacon. <laughs> It's a newspaper Holden stand. Wilder ran the local paper of record, the Beacon Beacon. News? No, it's the news that needs knowing. It's not a bad tagline. It's okay. You work from home today. Was busy doing something earlier. Ah, oh, nice, nice. Were you able to actually step outside today? Rolo ought to be careful poking around that part of town. Ooh. Change of clothes. Oh, interesting. Okay. It's like the morning. She's studying on a break and it's morning. We found our Hermione Granger. The early bird gets a proper education and required skills for a successful and fulfilling career later in life. Oh, somebody was born Asian. Uh <laughs>
He opened the window for five minutes a day and started sweating from the heat wave. Well, at least you were able to, you know, get air circulating around the room for a little bit. I swear to God, the heat is insane. We've got hipsters here. He's got he's wearing flannel. Are they both cats? They lazy but to help out in the cafe. Little gem of advice. He's got the emo bangs too. It's cute. If you never do what you don't love, then you'll never work a day in your life. Alright, we've talked to these people, we didn't get nothing out of it. How about this pregnant bunny lady? Emo bangs. The Fallout Boy bangs. Hey, Mrs. Nelson. Not really. Heard anything about the old fertilizer warehouse? Any strange happenings? Ooh, who's this leader? Could often be found near the fountain. He's an alligator. Too absorbed in a book to be distracted. <laughs> who's this cat? Hey, Roxy. What's up? Oh, right. Rendezvous with Roxy. This is an important turning point. What? The first time where your charms will change the course of fate. And currently, we only have one suitable charm at our disposal. Have no fear, we can always return later using the Chronicle once we find more charms. Well, now I'm just rambling. Where were we? Alright, we can time travel back to this point. Oh, you idiot. <laughs> oh, Rolo. Every card of the so it's up something happened about six years ago, right around the time that our main character, the uh, dear Luca, his dad passed away. So it's, it's kind of a mystery how or why it's, it's not been told yet, but recently his mom also disappeared. So we're trying to find out why. <laughs> Puny carrots. Why did it start dark? I don't know, dude. It started so dark. It started out he was grieving. The, the, the stream started out he was at the graveyard visiting his dad. I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. Rollo froze as Roxy took a step toward him, cracking her knuckles. Luca knew he had one chance to save his friend from being dragged home. Fast, he found the best way to deal with enraged Roxy was to be a little. <laughs> oh, we don't have any other words. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy was to be a little chill. Be cool, Luca. Now he has to go dig up the carrots while I have to investigate the warehouse alone. Oh, who's this lady?
Nope. Got shot down. A bit much, if you ask me. Indulgent. All right, we might be able to use that at some point. Who's this cute little terrier? German Shepherd? Chihuahua hybrid? Jeff's hardware closed down about a year ago. The effects of the foul harvest stretched wide. When there are no crops in the field, tractors don't need fixing. So it seems like this, whatever this event called the Foul Harvest is, has been destroying crops. And it still is to this day. <laughs> oh. A promise Gran regretted the second it was made. Getting real creepy here. Oof, real creepy, buddy. You gotta lay off that. I'm just a kid. Is that a bird? The phone booth was brand new. Part of Perennial Harvest's Beacon Pines Reborn initiative. It didn't see much use. I suppose if the town is really tiny, it wouldn't see a lot of use at all. Bug hunt. All right, no bug crunching. The path led into a small hollow at the edge of Weepwood. Right. Should I be here? The fence thrummed with a gentle electric buzz. Well, this is getting interesting. <laughs> We're going to find out what it is. Luca often asked himself what Rolla would do so that he could rule out that option. Oh. As sparks flew from the fence, the light atop that section shut off. Two bulbs remained. Ooh. One more to go. The fence's buzzing gave way to silence. Ooh, we Every were kid able in to town break in. knew the old Valentine Fertilizer Building. Long abandoned, the warehouse once served as the industrial heart of Beacon Pines. Now, it stood only as a reminder of things left behind. The dormant building showed strange signs of life. There was only one way to find out. We're gonna have to break in. Mission Impossible style. The hose emitted a subtle sound. A hose emitting sound? It was actively draining some kind of liquid. The water looked almost diseased. Oof. It flowed slowly into the woods. We <laughs> should flash back to Marcus's heist. He heard faint sounds coming from the other side of the door. This is gonna be creepy. He pressed his game. ear against the cold metal to hear better. The sound of footsteps grew louder. Oh, get out, get out. What? 
Why am I getting... Uh, why am I getting the, the vibes from that little child game that we played before? <laughs> I forget the name, but it was creepy. Little horrors, right? Let me get in that vibe. <laughs> the heavy steel door knocked Luca to the ground. It's a stranger stinks meets cute for the animals. Disoriented, he looked up to see an imposing figure silhouetted in a green glow. It lunged toward him. He tried to scramble away, but felt a gloved hand latch onto his ankle. Matt Hawkins, no! Luca watched his fingernails leave trails in the dirt as the hand slowly dragged him back through the door, into the lab, into the green light. Oof. I'm gonna get experimented on, guys. Not again. Stranger Things X Animal Girl. That's gonna be our t the title of the streams from now on. This is a story about change. It was far from the sort of change Luca imagined for himself. Stranger Crossing. But change is, after all, a dangerous animal. The end? I probably should have warned you about this. I think we died. There are many paths that our story can take. Most will end in tragedy, but don't let that discourage you. We will find the ending that this story deserves. I just know it. From here on out, a charm will have a check mark when it's been used to its full potential at a given turning point. Now, let's try something different. Alright, different checkpoint. Going back to shit. In the past, he found the best way to deal with an enraged Roxy <laughs> was to be a little shit. <laughs> Run! <laughs> <laughs> Rotor reminds you of Ironica. Current didn't... ward of In and future way. successor to the Valentine Fortune huffed as he brushed off his pants. Ooh, found a new word. This is, um, you can screenshot that if you want. <laughs> Why is I wanted a cute game why we're getting such adult talks? Oh no, it's not way of life. Solomon trifled a gesture toward the approaching heiress Valentine. Dog breed is she? Is she glassy? Uh -huh. When animal characters make more sense than a circle of people in your life. Yes. Yes, I agree. Uh -huh. Right, yeah, we, we got new interactions. We got a new word.
She looks like a poodle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's so out of breath. He's cute. <laughs> Touching the fence is bad. No shit, Rolo. Can okay, I throw that again? They know you idiot, really. <laughs> Hey, bounce back. As the glowing windows of the old oh, warehouse came into view, Rollo began to bounce excitedly. Oh. Rumble. The excitement in the air. What the hell are you doing, Rolo? Rolo's just going through everything, like... There was a guy that put me to my death, Rolo. Come on, chill out. Treasure! <laughs> Shit, that's not the hazardous space. Help me get in. <laughs> Ironic, it would be my honor to throw you in the trash. Find walkie talkies. Nice. Ah, of course they're dirty. Run. Tell me they found me. Alright. Oh shit, he's throwing something out. Oh, what's that? Is that a dead body? I hope it's not a dead body. The boy sat petrified under the weight of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Our first murder of the night. A ridiculous hat. Rollo felt around at the large sack which burdened them. It's been under one hour and I have died once and this would... Do you have this ridiculous whatever this is dead body there? Mm. 
He snapped off a tag from just within a small zipper opening in the bag. Rolo held the badge up to a faint shaft of light within the dumpster. Oh, it is a dead body. <laughs> bag full of slimy old name tags. <laughs> <laughs> we have a murder. These children are witnesses to a murder, apparently. <laughs> and it's on top of them. Everyone <laughs> was touching it. I'm done. <laughs> I am not holding her. <laughs> 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 oh, Jesus Christ. Oof. <laughs> you wanted this cute game, right? <laughs> it's a run. <laughs> if you don't hear me, I'll run. Actually, either way, all ass. This is a. I like Rolo's lines, it's very ironic. <laughs> Uh, whatever it was, it could be undead. Sure found an eventful way to start our summer. Oh wow, a moment of pride for our little boys who found something about a murder. All right, Lucas okay. sat in the dark, tracking the sound of Rollo's footsteps as he ran. One, two, three. He pressed his ear to the dumpster wall, straining to hear Rollo's footsteps as they faded away. Fifteen? Sixteen? Seventeen? He tried not to think about the contents of the dumpster as he counted. These were decayed. Thirty-five? Thirty-six? Thirty-seven? The thick stench made it hard to breathe. I'm sorry. Screw it, that's long enough! Luca carefully lifted the lid and peered out. Nothing. Yeah, here we go. No sign of Rollo. No sign of the man in the yellow suit. Time to haul ass. Luca clambered from the dumpster, stumbling to his knees. He was up like a shot and running, sprinting toward home as fast as he could. Beacon Pines flew by, blurred by the tears that welled up in his eyes. He wouldn't remember getting home at all that night. Throwing his front door open, storming up the stairs to his room and surrendering to sleep almost as abruptly as he hit his pillow. Actually, you know what? There's a small possibility that the hand ain't rotten since it's animal world, so it could have been just fur color, but also... No, 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 the hand was decomposing. I, I can confirm, as I have a bigger screen than... I have a screen that's big enough to see the details. Chapter 3 Finding a Friend The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Of course it would be. They found a dead body. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. <laughs> yeah, you can confirm that, yes. <laughs> so that's his... That's Luca's grandmother. And she's got... I said this before, but she's got the whole gypsy vibe going. No, nothing interesting. Just, you know, a dead body in the woods. Ugh. Please tell me that's going to be decoded later. Her, her hair 
serious all over the place. Grand's brow furrowed. Oh, shit. Did they find Luca's dead body? She let out a long sigh. Her voice was quiet and even. Was Luca dead? That was Luca. Was Rolo dead? Where's Rolo? Where's my friend? Like Esmeralda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I see it, yeah. <laughs> yes, she is. She's here to keep the household running. Because, you know, there's no income after dad died and mom disappeared. I'm a secretly a bounty hunter. Let's close that. We're not made of money. Do, 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 do. Is there no running around here? Then can I find something to defend myself with? Because the man in yellow is scary. Nope, 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 nope. Nothing. Alright, cool. A they have a small sound for the sound floated in the air. Upstairs. Where's that coming from? Oh! Radio. What was that? Where's that suspense for that? Oof. Somewhere to hide, somewhere to hide. Shit. Somebody's at the door. No. I don't want to open the door. I don't want to open the door. I just... I just want to sit here. Ignore everything. <laughs> it's not aging well at all. <laughs> but, 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 but. The the message I sent out on my notifications was, if I, if I remember correctly, um, about murder, which is you know not that far from what we were expecting. Ooh, come on! You know I thought this would be a nice kind of you know Animal Crossing esque game. Yeah, mystery. I didn't think there'd be murder. I hit every prediction. Such... <laughs> <laughs> no, it's such a cute game. I can't wait for it to turn upside down and, you know, scare me to death. It's about uh, accidentally kicking you yesterday. Troll. Oh, Christ. Rolo never made, Rolo never made it home. A pit formed in Luca's stomach. Dude. I told you. Dude. Dude. Rolla never made it home. Luca's mouth felt dry. And what did you go out of? You thought he just went out of his own to check the body again, and then you. What did you go out for, Grandma? 
Luca right. could feel his heart beating in his throat. Can I take the walkie talkie? Should I take the walkie talkie? We don't have a new turning point yet. Let's not go back. It's gonna be a long ride if we do. Luca glanced at the now silent walkie talkie. All right. Okay, I'm waiting. So, Rafik, what's, what's cooking in that brain of yours? If Rolo ain't home and I assume his walkie talkie is at home, then who was <laughs> you ca You catch on quick. He wasn't sure what to think. Luca glanced at the now. He wasn't sure what to think. What was that? Who was that? <laughs> Ooh. This game was missing some tags like psychological horror. Let's you know, try to forget for a moment that this is that our best friend has been kidnapped at the very least. Enjoy the nice artwork. Forget the fact that somebody's missing. <laughs> what genre is this? Is every is what ironic asks me every time I pick a game that he has never heard about, like this one. <laughs> it's it's a really good game so far, and it's and we've only done like an hour in. It's. It's insane. Ironic was like, oh, it's adorable. Ironic, wait until an hour in, dude. Just, just wait. Here's this kid. Hey, bird. Flipboards. Um, let's, uh, check the clubhouse. Rolo's not in the clubhouse. This is our clubhouse, by the way. It's been intense, this game. I'm sure we'll find out what happened to Rolo. Whether he's safe or not. <laughs> okay, Mr. Piggy is asleep. It's Toby. <laughs> Anytime anybody wants to ask you something, you get that look. Like, I have better things to do, Toby. Toby looked up from the clipboard excitedly. You know, he's, he's, I think he's just a researcher. New word. Google survey, my dude. <laughs> Can you check where the adults aren't? We would. It sure doesn't end for another couple of hours. Okay, I'm supposed to look for 
Rolo in the library. Who's these are new people? Oh, I like their characters. The art design is really cute. Except for the fact that there's an abduction and a missing child. No wonder if it looks Velma. Yeah, yeah, she does look like Velma because of the sweater. It's adorable. What's this? Last Chance Diner? What's this place? Oh, I haven't been here yet. Hey, Don. Oh. Strange lights. Somebody else is gonna go, go missing. Cause I told him about it. The diner. I could sit here, I suppose. No. Nope. We gotta find our band. A bit much. Where is... I've never been to the library, I think. Oh, hey, this is new. Is that a tiny dog? It's cute. Buds and bulbs. <laughs> He just said no touching and he just smacked the watermelon. It's a big watermelon though. That's Rolo been by. I've never been to the library, I think. We already knew that and we're still going. Rolo doesn't look like the type that reads. Which is it's still accurate because Ironic never reads anything in the video games. Or <laughs> history. We all know It'll take him too long. Is a great town. What you may not know is great towns grow from mighty roots. And that is why you cannot tell the story of Beacon Pines without telling the story of one sharper Valentine. Young Sharper's keen intellect and strong moral fiber led to a grand vision. A vision of a still in character, right? to a better tomorrow. In his own words. A better tomorrow is within our grasp, but it requires a singular mind to harness it. Lucky for us, he decided to grow that vision here, in Beacon Pines. And how does one grow a better tomorrow? With fertilizer, of course. Valentine's Fertilizer Company became the lifeblood of a town yearning for purpose. But then tragedy struck. A scientific experiment gone wrong. An accident which took Sharper away from us far too soon. To this day, we struggle to pick up the pieces. But one foul harvest isn't enough to stop the people of Beacon Pines. The spirit of Sharper Valentine lives on. It lives in the hearts of everyone with a dream for a better tomorrow. Don't spill your iced to coffee, dude. We will follow his example and grow it's expensive. a future. Paid for by the Valentine family and the Valentine Fertilizer Capital Riverfence Fund. <laughs> yep. That was very unhelpful. 
A little entertaining, maybe a little bit educational, but definitely unhelpful. Mickey D's. Ooh. Wait, it's breakfast time? Right now for you? You, ha you can order breakfast right now for you? Oh, yeah, yeah, the library is open, right? This is the library. New additions. There were rarely any actual new additions. Simply, a variety of existing content rotated into the front display each week. Not fooling anyone. Oh, the cobs I've eaten. A salad-centric travel guide for the mildly adventurous. <laughs> I ordered breakfast this morning and kept the coffee at <laughs> All right, okay, yeah, all right. That makes sense. That makes much more sense. Uh, okay. So you just kept it in the fridge this whole time? Sally Seashore's Simple Succulent Sundries. Simple Succulent Sundries. Luca brushed off a smudge of dust. Or maybe it was flour. 30 recipes so easy you'll doubt it's even edible. <laughs> I really doubt it's, it's actually edible. A peek behind the curtain. The methods and ruminations of Patrick C. Montesquieu. One of the greatest acting minds of our time. Mm -hmm. By Patrick C. Montesquieu. Of course. Cotto volunteered at the library during the summers. He wasn't very social, so he'd dedicate each summer to becoming an expert in a single subject, making him a reliable source of very particular knowledge. Miggy's coffee is pretty good. I actually like their coffee float. If you were to ask Kato something he didn't know, he'd escape into the dusty old bookshelves and return with just the right thing. Kato was lost in his reading. Luca crooked his neck to see the title. Introduction to Melatology. Oh, he's a little penguin, dude. He gestured to the shelves. Uh, his hands are weird because he has five fingers. I like the fight icon. Give him flippers. You'll be the first to know. Right, I told my grandmother I wouldn't be anywhere weird. The I just entire the top level of the library was devoted to comics. Most of which were Hank Atomic and the myriad of lesser revered spin-offs. Mycological phosphorescence. <laughs> the bottom corner shelf was a dusty array of thick science books. Only one binding was clean enough to read. Cellular biology and the chemistry of mitosis. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I see why Rolo might be in the library because they have comics of Hank Atomic at the library. That's probably the only reason he might be there. This is like Luca being Link and Rolo being Zelda. <laughs> Taking his own sweet time to save him. Mm 
Van Horn. Get it? Because deer. Beck's family moved often. Is Beck a girl? I assume she's a girl. But that might just be me making an unfair assumption based on the design. Giving her little time to establish any real connections. Ah, her. Her. She would uh, tell you cool. she prefers it that way. Can't make a mistake with these pronouns. Luca shifted his feet uncomfortably. All right. We'll catch you in a bit. I'll update you when you come back. Beck pulled a coin from her pocket. The unlucky penny. Keep up. I have made a friend. The insect dude can't find the beetles in the ground. After the foul harvest destroyed their wealth and reputation, the Valentines shuttered off their estate from the rest of town. The Valentine Mansion loomed over every other building in town, both figuratively and literally. Uh, of course it's the mayor's house. Whose house is this though? We'll find out soon, I guess. Is this another path down here? Nope. Oh, that's new. Luca felt a chill as he approached Beck. Her eyes were locked on the strange green liquid. The nearby grass was coated in a fine layer of frost. Ooh, puddles of glowing ooze. Luca watched as Beck dipped a broken tree branch into the goo. Beck's eyes widened as flowers grew from the dead wood. First huh. small buds, which quickly bloomed into vibrant petals. As quickly as they had grown, the flowers began to shrivel and turn gray. Ooh. Beck dropped the stick with a grunt of disgust. Who are these bullies? I see we found our resident dicks in the game. Slider. Iggy took a step towards Luca, his sneer lit by the glowing puddle. We have the choice to become violent here. Beck could see tears welling in Luca's eyes, his fists clenched. Some things about Beacon Pines were very different from the city. 
But a bully from a hayseed town is really no different from a city bully. Beck took a deep breath and thought. Time to bust out there. Strange. <laughs> Tickles. Yeah, let's 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 work with tickles for now. Well, time to bust out the tickles. <laughs> Beck lunged forward and began to tickle under Tish's arms. Tears began to form in Tisha's eyes as she gasped for breath between gales of Beck redoubled her efforts until Tish finally had had enough. Iggy's eyes darted around, a realization dawning on his face that he was now outnumbered. Iggy's still a bully. Iggy kicked at the puddle before making his escape. Shook the ooze out of her hair as best as she could. Ooh, no, there's ooze in her hair. No more refined. Her hair got gray and old. Chapter 4 The Best Policy. Luca paused for a moment, catching his breath. He'd only just met Beck, and somehow he already managed to drag her into this mess. Hopefully he could make it up to her, but finding Rolla was his primary concern. What can we find here? Alright, we can't cross the puddle, we can't touch the puddle because it ages us, apparently. Roxy and Fitz looked drained. It was clear they'd spent all day searching. <laughs> Roxy's temper could often be dismissed as the impatience of an older sibling. Hey guys. So if you're new to the chat, it's we're playing Beacon Pines. This is a weird game. It's weird because it's cute and also really, really dark for some reason. And it's a mystery, so we're, we're figuring it out. Have fun, jump in, feel free to be in the chat, let us know what you think. But this was the most intense Luca had ever seen her. Her eyes were wild and unfocused, looking straight through Luca. <laughs> in a torrent of rambled words and tears, Luca broke down. Yep, there was a dead body. Roxy, still exhausted and angry, softened briefly as her eyes hunted the ground and thought. With a determined sigh, she looked up at Luca. Roxy drew herself up. Oh. Roxy tried to think of the safest place to send Luca. Luca wiped his cheeks and gave a quick nod. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, back to the treehouse. Looking we into the puddle, normal. Roxy rubbed her arms to warm up. Wait at the tree house in case Rolo shows up. Uh, Alright, the fence isn't electrified. That's good news, I suppose. Luca peeked up at the beehive. It appeared to be deserted. 
There's no bugs. What's happening in this place? Mr. Nuncree jumped with a start. <laughs> Luca motioned to the phone booth. He heard. Oh, more. More mysterious things. I don't So this is more Stranger Things than Animal Crossing, just so you, you know. <coughs> Unless... Luca, what do you know? Mr. Nuncree gently placed one of his substantial hands on Luca's shoulder. Oh, that's not good. Luca peered up at Mr. Nuncree. Kind eyes warmed a stern face. Is he the guy in the suit? Though? There was a deeper emotion hiding beneath it all. It was subtle, but Luca could sense something eating away at him. Shame in his eyes. There was a shame lurking behind those eyes. <coughs> a deep sadness. If Mr. Nuncreed was that worried about Rollo, maybe he could help. Mr. Nuncreed raised an eyebrow. He would withdraw when he went missing, yes. I was hiding in a dumpster and Rolo went out first. <clears throat> I think it was a body. Mr. Nuncreed's shoulders slumped. A deep sigh bellowed from his chest. Oh, he's the guy in the yellow suit. Luca attempted to take a step back, but Nuncreed's hand clamped down on his shoulder. Oof. <clears throat> what? With a firm shove, Nuncreed manhandled Luca into the phone booth. The door latched shut with a mechanical hiss. As Luca pounded the glass, the floor dropped from under his feet. The inside of the phone booth was now a loose capsule plummeting at gravity's whim. Luca winced Oof. and pressed his hands to the walls. As he braced for impact, the capsule hurried to a surprisingly smooth stop. He felt a cold rush of air and opened his eyes with hesitance. Two large figures in hazmat suits occluded his view. Luca heard the deep, resigned voice of Mr. Nuncreed over an intercom. He knows too much. The end. Oof. We died again. <laughs> Oof. Wait, no, this isn't the end. I know there's still much more. Somehow this went wrong. Okay, let's try something else. Not change. Change. Uh, how about strange here? Well, time to bust out the strange. Little mud bath. Beck stared in silence, the only sign of life being the twitch of an eye. 
All right, let's try to freak them out. At the sight of Iggy taunting back, something in Lucas snapped. Ooh. Iggy smirk shifted to a look of shock as Luca launched himself into his stomach. Iggy's Ooh. clothes were drenched in the glowing ooze. Oh. Iggy's voice began to slur as he struggled to get up. What the f Oh, Iggy has mutated. <clears throat> the person at the warehouse. The strange ooze and what it did to Iggy. Oh. Was Rolo caught up in all of this? You gotta find a friend, buddy. So the ooze is property of the old warehouse. What's this? Turned around. Something suspicious. Rolo was safe. All right. A wave of relief washed over Luca, which was quickly replaced by a sense of dread. Gran is going to kill me. If he hurried, he might just make it home before sundown. Perhaps. Perhaps Chapter he will kill him. Our harvest awaits. Luca took a deep breath and gingerly opened the door, stealing himself for Gran's wrath. Where's the grandmother? Is she in the back? Nope, she's not here. Oh, where did she go? Where did she go? No, no, safe and sound, but where are you? Luca was alone. The house was empty. Sitting by the pond, listening to small waves lap against a rock. His father sat in a folding chair in front of him. Without turning, he spoke. Why don't you grab me some nice bait? Sure thing, Dad. Luca hopped over to the tackle box and popped open the lid. Inside was a rolling, buzzing mass. We're fishing with bees? Luca's father gave a warm chuckle. Well, you catch more fish with bees than honey. Pick us out a good one. Luca closed his eyes and plucked out a bee. He could feel its wings struggle between his finger and thumb. Holding it at arm's length, he hurried over. His father deftly baited the hook and examined his work. Interesting choice. With a practiced flick of the wrist, the line buzzed in a graceful arc. The water accepted it without a splash or ripple. The wrong choice. But I respect it. The pond began to oh. freeze over. Sometimes we gotta make the wrong choice before we can make it right. Pallid ice propagated across the still surface with an alarming speed. Ooh. Luca scrambled back as the ground beneath him turned cold. Dad, I don't understand. Sorry, kiddo. Understanding isn't always part of the deal. But we're fish. Fishing instead of finding rock. Okay, so we, uh, we died again. So we, we did something else and... Rolo was reported fine, but now Granny's gone. 
Well, she's not at the house. <laughs> and I want to sleep and dreaming. The relentless ice shot through the fishing line toward his father. Yes, we died. Dead, look out! His father casually wound the reel. None of it's your fault, you know. Never was. So there's a there's the guy that owns a candy store. And apparently he's in on it. Dad, we have to go. Luca grabbed his father's shoulders, trying to pull him away. Please, you, you have to run. The ice crackled as it spread across his father's hands. That's the thing about fishing, Luca. His chest began to crystallize. You toss your hook in, and you never know what you're gonna pull out. You gonna fight before? A shock of searing cold ran up Luca's arms. He gave one last desperate tug. The chair tipped backwards in a single frozen mass. Luca tried to stop the momentum, but it was too late. He watched the icy form of his father slam into the hard ground, shattering into a thousand pieces that crowded around his feet. How is this a children's game? Dad, I don't understand. What is How this is this mean? a children's game? Oof. Oh. The gentle rustle of leaves was the only reply. Luca's eyes struggled to focus on the walkie-talkie. Faintly, he could hear Rollo amongst the noise. All right. Rollo's voice was coming through more clearly now. But some words were still just static. Oh, ho, ho. The signal went silent. <laughs> the, the plot thickens. Luca held still, waiting for a response. Dude. You know what? Compared to this, Detroit Become Human feels a little tamer. <laughs> Just... What? I thought we were going in for a nice relaxing you know game if I, or IRL it's messed up someone would say a missing kid came home safe he's in on it that's why he said that the the kid went home safe his pounding heartbeat marking the passage of time Lolo's voice began to fade With that, the signal died for good. Luca right. grabbed the walkie-talkie and sprinted to the treehouse. Okay, we're going to the treehouse to boost the signal of this walkie-talkie. What's up here? Oh, right, 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 right. Dad's resting place. Luca uh. heard a group of footsteps approaching. He dashed behind the bushes to avoid being spotted. It's Grandma! With other people. What's happening? Mr. Tolliver paused, shifting his eyes to one side. Everybody's involved in something. I just don't know what. Mr. Tolliver took one long, quiet breath. Oh, 
though something's happening, there's there's two forces at play, I think. Uh, you all spies! Uh, the three shared a determined look. Uh, oh my god. Uh, uh, Everybody's so shady. Everybody's up to something. What is up with this village? Down? Down. Uh. <laughs> I did not expect the jump scare to affect me that much in this game. Yep, 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 that's... Yep, that's me. That is me, Luca. Yep. I get you. Same, same. It's one thing if it was a normal jump scare, but hey, the sounds. <laughs> yep, yep, it's the sounds that we don't like. Has Grand Grand been doing anything lately? Oh, she's been doing a lot of things lately. Or both. Yeah, I'm also just a boy. A little boy. <laughs> Slinks back into the bushes. Can't help but notice, regardless of game genre, it's always a detective game by the end of Tuesday. <laughs> I try not to make it a detective game, but detective games are fun, dude. Alright. I guess, like, it's, it's cute. It says that you can... What were the tags in this game? I forget. Um, The tags were... The stream... Steam tags were uh, cute, indie. Let me open up. Where's the Steam thing? It was um, Christ store page. The tags were visual novel, choose your own adventure, cozy. Those are the only three tags. And you know what the review said? The review said... Fantastic narrative game. Artwork is adorable. Characters have big personalities. User of humor was refreshing. How was I supposed to know that somebody was gonna die? Like, what the hell was that? <laughs> None of it... None of it pointed to the idea that, you know... This is a mystery and we're going to have to solve some sort of small town conspiracy. What's this? Who's talking at this hour of night? This is like that one restaurant in Google with a handful of review. Rearrange letters. The two boys shared a mischievous grin. Huh. That one restaurant in Google this is like... It's nice! The waiters are charming! But they never say anything about the food. What did they do? What about the sign? What sign? Got it. Anyway, we're in, er, the whole town is a scandal. So this, it's pretty much Animal Riverdale or Animal Crossing Scooby Doo. 
I, I still believe it's Animal Crossing Stranger Things crossover. Do what? Oh, Jesus Christ. Luca could only see a cloaked shape behind the rocket. I've got weapons in here. No, you don't, kid. He strained to hear as a muffled voice began. Something that's already dead? Fear gripped Luca's throat. Luca stared at the ground for a moment, trying to place the dampened voice. The figure shifted slowly from behind the Is this Iggy? Revealing itself to Luca. This is Iggy. So, um, you remember we found a uh, green ooze on the floor in the forest, right? And the cat girl dipped a stick into it and the stick grew cherry blossoms and it immediately died after. Yeah, we uh we pushed one of the bullies there into the puddle. And it covered half of it. So I'm guessing this is him. Yeah, that's Iggy. Luca reached over empathetically. Iggy's tone jolted to dejected anger. Luca slumped to the ground, overwhelmed by guilt. And the power of friendship and this gun I found. The tree house isn't safe. Oh, Rolo, you dick. But it's different now. Oh, ho, ho, the clipboard survey, guys. Google surveys. Um, Oh, Jesus Christ. Hello, Mr. Van Horn. We would love to hear your thoughts. Rolo coming in with the warnings right before a whole invasion moment. Oof. Do you have time for an informal chat? <laughs> your time is valuable to us. We're surrounded. The function of the cherries, yes. If the cherries were really aggressive survey takers. Creepy knob cranked to ten. Oh Christ. Gotta remember to drink your water, kids. Who can Luca trust in this place? There's nobody you can trust. Iggy slumped to his knees. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Luca grabbed the walkie-talkie and headed for the window. Luca and Iggy climbed up the back of the treehouse to its roof, where Rolo had constructed his MCDC. His what? The Mission Control Defense Cannon. From behind the crowd of clipboards, William Kerr strode forward, a warm smile on his face. Mickey D's. He's just an experiment to them now. Yeah, 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 yeah. All you need to know is that he's sick. Oh ho ho! A little lost. Kerr's smile faltered. Oh, the hyena was always sus. Lucas' grip tightened on the MCDC. For now, at least. Oh, are you threatening my friend, buddy? Oh. I didn't expect this much threats in, in a game that looks this nice. Luca's mind raced. He was caught in a trap. What do you do when there's no hope? Iggy wiped his cheeks with a sleeve. What are you gonna do, Luca? We gonna fight. We gone. It's really our only option. Himself up and decided to take the only option they had left. He swung the mission control defense cannon around, aiming it confidently at the smirking face of William Kerr. It's a plunger. Luca summoned his most insolent demeanor. Oh, we sad. Turned his back on the two boys. <laughs> With a nonchalant wave of the hand, he made his exit. Then we gotta run. As the clipboards began to slowly advance on the treehouse, Luca looked to Iggy with resignation in his eyes. The end. That escalated quickly. Maybe discretion was the better part of valor here. Oh, yeah, so we let's died. Put a pin in this for now. Maybe we can go back. Warehouse of Horrors. Yeah, we can try to struggle here. Yeah, good. Cool. Struggle. This is a story about struggle. Luca could hear a machine humming somewhere nearby. He felt around wildly, searching for something, anything that could help. His hands found a hard object, maybe a tile? He yanked it free, lifting the cold stone. Let me go! Luca swung the tile as hard as he could at the shape that still held fast to his leg. He heard the crack of glass as the stone hit the assailant's mask. With a muffled yelp, the hand let go. Now this is um, one of the routes we take, in which case um, we're not with Luca. No, wait, we're not with Rolo, and we're alone in the warehouse. Luca was free and scrambled to the door. He never looked back once on the long run home. Chapter 3 Everything's fine. The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. 
Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. There was another silence. Two badges to drop off. Call me Burr and the bag and all. Alright, cool. Her associates. Mrs. Fratelli at the diner. He seems to have taken particular interest in my jam. Nan Creed is one of the sus suspects. He he caused her death at one point. Yes. All right. See you in a bit. Mm. Mm, I should slow down on drinking the water, but ah, my breathing feels good. Jennifer Hartberg. All right, business proposition. Okay. Okay. Granny has a proposition. Aliens? <laughs> oh, Rolo. house tonight. Alright. I think Rolo's live and well. What are you doing here? Luca checked the soles of his sandals. Beetles went missing when the pre Fed's festival preparation blah blah festival preparations began. Interesting. The chat with Mr. Wild. Valentine, oldest of Sharper Valentine's children, and heir to the Valentine fortune had a way of making questions seem like demands. Mr. Wilder had learned to assume that if he was hearing from Eris, it was because she had taken issue with something he had put in the paper. Front page of this morning's paper was consumed by stories with the city festival. Monocle. Permanent fixture of your anatomy. Mr. Wilder averted his gaze and began to polish his monocle. Wow, power play by the strong wind. Shana, baby. Is 
Mr. Tolliver. Huddled at his counter, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining apples. More accurately, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining one apple. With a yelp, Mr. Tolliver fumbled the apple, flailing at the air as it fell. He leaned forward and lowered his voice. Yes. He leaned in a bit further. Mr. Tolliver leaned back, speaking loud enough for anyone to hear. Thank you so much for giving this jam to me. He reached forward Not suspicious and at all. the jars of jam, giving Luca a little wink. He leaned in for a final whisper. He kept him on ice. You want some ice cream or not? Oh, Bert, you curious animal. Dawn had dreams of becoming a big time reporter. At night, she searched for the story that could be her big break. By day, she hawked papers at the newsstand. Oh, what sort of weird things in our town, Dawn? Diner's finally open. She leaned forward and pinched Luca's cheek. shifted the basket uncomfortably. Mrs. Fratelli lifted the cloth and inspected the jam. She carefully lifted out her jars of jam. Careful now. Luca squinted at the faded photo of him and his mom at the diner. Memories of that day came flooding back. His mom is at the diner. All right, we're doing orders. Oh, okay. Order. Hey, sushi. How are you? Seems like it. Oh, it seems like a cute game, but we've died a few times already. People have died as well. There's like a really, really interesting. What did she say on you? Or it will go with. Succulent. Yeah. How do you think she's. Indulge it. Chicken and bacon. Okay, yeah, right. Okay, yeah, chicken and bacon. Put it back in. Chicken. Bacon. Done. Mm. 
Love me tenders. Oh. We sales putting a family ever forward. Luca glanced at the empty seat across from Gus. Child labor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm helping my helping the mother here. I was too busy to be uh... Cold cuts up with a uh, pile of sloppy chili. Alright, okay. Cold cuts, sloppy chili. Cold, this is cold cuts, yeah. Chill, chili. Got it. Sir, here's your order. Why would you order that? So weird. Such a weird order. Shrunk the weight stuff. Jeff slapped the table and gave Luca a toothy grin. Hey, that's Jeff. This is the first time I've met the character. A sweet burger. Sweet burger, grilled cactus. I I see I see where this is going. We've got a candy burger. And cactus. You're weird, Jeff. Sweet and stabby. Hey Seraphic, welcome back, dude. We haven't died yet, but I'm helping my mom with the diner. That's the mayor. He seems really, really tired. We ain't got time for this. <laughs> the investigation ain't finding itself. He looks like a really tired, hard boiled detective, right? I've seen some shit. I want to retire from the force. That kind of detective. <laughs> Alright, at least I gave child giving sp public speaking tips to the mayor would be great um, now we're still good uh, we're, I'm trying to figure out what else I need to be doing jab to Mr. Nunkree chipper Mr. Nuncreed eyed Luca for a moment, then nodded in agreement. I suppose it's practical to have a mayor who can protect himself when he's... If he was out of our city. I suppose so, yeah. I mean, most people who have been elected in US... There's, there's a good number of US politicians who have been elected on the basis of their contributions to either law enforcement or the military. So, you know, can say for other countries, but it makes sense. Did for mine, the guys who were supposedly hard on crime generated more fans. So, yeah. Juniper drops those off herself. Then Creed snatched the basket from Luca. What? He didn't have to hold the basket hostage. Okay. Is 
He's our friend from before, and back. Well, she needs help, so we're going after her. Oh, that's her parents. Cool. Right. Is she adopted? What a progressive game. Beck locked eyes with Luca. The look on her face was equal parts expectant and desperate. Oh, they're so cute together. Beck gave Luca a quick nudge. What? Uh, she's very independent. Alright, this is probably the relaxing part of the game before the mystery gets kicked in at level 12 out of 10. Friend Crypt. Getting a bit late, and we did catch a whole bunch of progress today. I'm gonna have to. F Romance is my last focus of this game. Yes, it is. People have been dying. I have died a lot. Rolo died once. Um. So yeah, what do you think of this game, dude? You having fun? I have an early day tomorrow, so I might call it a night early. Yeah, I know. This thing. I have to report to the office tomorrow. This was fun though. Like, aside from the fact that... Um, aside from the fact that this is traumatizing. This was fun. <laughs> we'll check back. I, I, I didn't really expect this to finish in one sitting. So we'll... We'll do this again next week. And probably the week after that. And then we'll find... Once we, once we finish the real story, the real ending, we'll try to move on to something that's a little less traumatizing, yeah? Right, I hope you have a good night, morning, afternoon, from wherever you are. This is Norm. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one, guys.